Hello and welcome back to the fourth episode of my Solving Differential Equations series. As always, I recommend watching the prior videos so that you have the basic understanding to be able to follow along. So today we're going to look at something called the reduction of order method, where we have a differential equation like this, and we already know a single solution. This may be by inspection, or we might have been given it. For this second order ODE, say we know that one of the solutions is y1 equals x. It wouldn't be too bizarre for the second solution to be of the same form. So let's times y1 by a function of x. Let's call that v. Now if we substitute our value of y1 in, we have this expression for y2. To find v of x, we're going to want to substitute this in, so we need to differentiate this twice. Where we get these expressions, which you can verify if you fancy. To which we can now substitute these into our second order ODE. Now this looks more like an expression we may be able to solve, so let's expand those brackets. If this method is performed correctly, the v of x terms will cancel each other out. Which is exactly what they do here, giving us a much easier expression to solve. We can also see that we can combine the first differential of v of x terms, giving us 4x squared times the first differential. This is now in the form of a linear first order differential equation, where say we make a sensible substitution where the differential of v of x equals w of x. Now substituting this in, we get this equation, where x cubed plus the differential of w of x plus 4x squared plus w of x equals 0 which is just a homogeneous first order linear differential equation, which we looked at in the very first episode, where we looked at the separation of variables method. Therefore, if we begin by getting all the x's to one side, and then divide both sides by w, we will actually have separated both variables. Hence, we'll just get that 1 over w times the differential of w equals minus 4 over x to which we can continue following the same procedure as we did in the first video by taking the differential in terms of x. If we rewrite this differential of w into its actual form, we'll be able to see how these dx's cancel more clearly. Then if we integrate both sides by the respective elements, we come to this expression where ln is just a natural logarithm. Therefore, if we move the minus 4 to become the power of x, and then we take the exponential of both sides, we can cancel out these ln's, giving us that w just equals a constant times x to the minus 4. But as we're trying to solve for v, we need to substitute this back in. Then we can differentiate both sides to find the normal expression for v of x, where v of x just equals minus a constant over 3 times x to the minus 3 plus another constant d. Now as we're looking for the second solution of y, we can substitute our expression at the bottom there back into this, so we know that y2 equals x times v of x. But as this is just in a general form, we can choose what the constants we want. So let's say we choose c to equals minus 3 and d to equals 0, it'll make it a lot easier to solve. Hence we find that y2 just equals x to the minus 2. And once again, as we've got two solutions, we need to sum them together and we add constants before them to give our general solution. And hence, our general solution is just a constant times x plus another constant times x to the minus 2. So thank you for joining me again today. In the next video, we're going to look at initial value problems and boundary value problems. So I'll see you then. Please consider subscribing and have a lovely day.